All right, guys, uh, welcome everyone to the first episode of uh, Big Dramas Podcast, BDP. Um, I'm your host, uh, Ren, or Rennie, and I've got a, my co-host here with me, uh, my brother, uh, Pluggers, or Two Skis. <laughs> <laughs> and on the first episode, boys and girls, uh, we've got a special guest, um, one of our close mates that we grew up with um, here on our show. I uh, probably should give a little rundown of how our podcast is going to be. Uh, it's a sporting podcast, so we'll be having sporting guests from uh, all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of sports. So anything sports and entertainment, we'll probably be uh, talking about it on this podcast. Um, but yeah, introducing our first guest, uh, we've got Pete Sami, man. How are you, brother? Yeah, good, mate. Sami. Thanks for having me, boys. Cheers, cheers, cheers naka, for that, naka, bro. Naka, naka. Cheers for that, man. How you feeling, bro? How you feeling? Yeah, good. Good, mate. Um, moved back to Melbourne for six weeks. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, that's back, good, mate. Back home, mate. Back home. Yeah, back home. Back nah, with the parents. <laughs> that's good, man. That's good. <laughs> Firstly, we'll just get through the segments. And after the segments and that, we'll just uh, get straight into it and just uh, yeah, have a yarn about your journey, how you got into rugby, um, and just all your trials and tribulations that came came with it. So... Um, without further ado, uh, we'll go with the first segment, which is Ren's Rapid Fire. Uh, basically, I'll just give you two names and you just pick one. How long do I have to pick? You got, you got probably about five seconds, four seconds. Yeah. There's only a couple. There's I'll, only a couple, couple of them. I'll count you down, mate. Count him down. Count him down. And what if he uh, no, can't answer? Can't answer, mate. That's a full <laughs> swig of your <laughs> Corona Extra there, buddy. Shout out to it's only, there's, a, there's only a few of them, so, <laughs> so it isn't too 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 bad. So um, for the first one, uh, Nemanja Nadolo or Henry Spate? Oh, that's toughy. Five. In their prime, the way we have to go in their prime. Yeah, in their prime, we'll go. Yeah, who are you going with? Give me another. Oh, yeah, that's 10 seconds. Ten. Oh, that's, I think that's one of these I'll go ones. with our big Nems. Nems. Ooh. Oh, Nems gets the, nice. the nod over Henry. Shout out to uh, Henry. We've got David Havili or Len Ikitao. In their prime. <laughs> Fuck. Some say that they're still, still nearly, the not in their prime. So. Hit his prime. Yeah. 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 He's coming. Oh, I'll go Davey. Davey. Hey. Davey gets the nod. Shout out to Len. Uh, this one's going to be Len. interesting. Um, we've got... Alan Alalator or Michael Alalator? Oh. Oh. Ah, mate. That, that is the tough one. Count him uh, down, mate. Where's the countdown, uh, man? Uh, no, 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 no. None of that. <laughs> uh, Al. Big Al. Oh. Big Al. Shout out to the boys. Why, why, why Al? Nah, I guess. it's rapid fire, mate. No, no. Rapid fire, but Yeah, ra- sorry. Take that a swing, sorry, mate. Take a swing. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got uh, another big one. David Pocock or Richie McCall? Oh. I don't know what that sound effect was, but... Um. <laughs> Richie. Richie. Ooh, that sounds like it was yeah. close one. And the last one of the rap- rapid fire, we've got Crusaders or the Brumbies. Oh, oh man. That's toughy. I You're think taking a, drink, a swig, mate. mate. You're taking a swig. <laughs> <laughs> that's worth the drink, though. That that's one. worth a drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was hard. That was actually hard. Work. Yeah, that's a worth a drink. Just um, before we, we go on to the next segment, uh, we've got to <laughs> give him the proper introduction where he played and whatnot. But <laughs> for those that don't know, Pete actually played um, uh, for both of those clubs that we just mentioned, the Crusaders and the Brumbies. So... Basically, the two best uh, Super Rugby teams in both uh, New Zealand and Australia, and he's also played for the Wallabies as well. So, um, sorry for selling you short on that in, but um, I had to squeeze that in before we got to the next segment, which is the SBC, the Start Bench Cut. So uh, I'll give you three names, and then obviously you'll pick who starts and who benches, and uh, who, who you're going to cut out of the three guys. So the first three, I'm going to go. Richie Moonga, Dan Carter, and Bowden Barrett. Sorry if you're going to get text messages from a couple of these boys, man. <laughs> nah, let's start Richie. Start Richie. Bench. 
Dan Carter. <laughs> and then Cut Bowden. Cut Bowden, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a tough one, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Do, don't know. Who you, you, <sighs> Just tough, man. It's tough. Nah, you, it do is. You, would you say Richie because you've played with him? Or just Richie because of what he's achieved over, you know, just a short period of time? Um... Because Dan, Probably, Dan yeah, you, he's, you're benching mate. a. <laughs> yeah, I know. I took that into consideration. Yeah, mate, yeah, in yeah, the last time. five seconds. <laughs> in that short period of time. Well, you, you, the majority uh, of the, you played majority of your footy with Richie, anyways. Yeah, and he's compared to the other guys, you know. Yeah, he has. I mean, he hasn't won the World Cup yet. Yeah, but he's, he's yeah, on the verge of Super Rugby titles that. Dan Carter doesn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, nah, I think. But you know, I think he's on the he's on the money there. Yeah. Dan's, true that. You know, Dan Carter's the goat. Yes. And I'm sure uh, Rich is going to be up there in uh, no time. Yeah. That's it, mate. All right. The next three names start bench cut. We've got David Pocock, we've got Richie McCall, and we've got George Smith. Oh. Which is a tough one if you've watched rugby growing up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is a tough to, one. I'll start George Smith. Oh, she talk 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 behind that decision. I don't hate it, man. Any I'll start yeah, any of these uh, three. Just uh, I just feel like you know what he gives on the field. True that what, eighty minutes. Yeah. Wow. You can't match it, mate. Yeah. And, and I heard, and then. Uh, I was gonna name my bench player, but who who is your bench player? Um Pocock. Oh but, wow. Yeah. But I'm only only cutting McCall because I feel like he's 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 a starter, you know. He's yeah. not a bench player that you know could Yeah, that's that's right. Come man. on and Damn. Add, I mean he could add value, but you know, not as much as I feel. How many tests Pocock has he really won. played off the bench, eh? Yeah. Yeah, compared to his uh, True that. starter. Damn, that's, yeah, that's, that's, some that's good. toughy, man. Yeah, that's tough, oh, man. Uh, that is. You don't, to be honest, if you've got any of these three anyways in the team, oh, you're, you're, you're gonna, not going to you're you're win most rucks. Oh, so. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to win most rucks, man. So you're not going to lose the rucks <laughs> if you've got any of those three. That's for yeah. sure. Um, the next three, I've got uh, Digby Ioani, another Malburnian, Marika Kuribidi, and uh, Jonah Lumu. Oh, I think the starter should be easy here, but everyone's different. That's it. Like we're talking prime, eh? yeah. Prime. We'll, yeah, we'll go prime. Mate, got to start, Jonah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tough decisions here, mate. In this. I feel like he'd add value anywhere. Who's Come that? off the bench, Jonah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Oh, Come off the bench. Rugby on the map, though. S- start him at eight. <laughs> <laughs> start him at 12. <laughs> you going to start him or you got to bench him? Or cut him? Or, oh, nah, can't cut him. Oh, I'll probably start him. Nice. He gets the nod. He gets the nod. Um, and I'll probably have Diggers off the bench. Ooh. And Marika. Like, um, yeah, this is <coughs> the same as the the back rowers one. Yeah. Yeah. Marika's the starter anyway. Starter or yeah. not there at all yeah. kind of thing. And, and yeah. Like the other three anyways, you don't really lose much. Yeah. Because nah. Marika's pretty much similar to how Digby plays. Like, Are they crazy? All energy. Yeah. Diggers back in his prime. Oh. Oh. The Reds. 2-11. 2 Yeah. Mm. Super rugby team. That was a scary team. I've got the last start bench and cut. And it is Scott Robertson, Dave Rennie, and old mate Eddie Jones. Oh. Tough on, yeah? Mate. <laughs> ah, it's, it's not very cheers, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> cheers, mate. Have a cheers, man. Get a cheers in here. Oh. Nah, um, that's pretty easy one, I think. Which, which one's going to be the start, though? Um, oh, no, it'd be... Start. S- Razor. Yeah. Scott Robinson. Give one, yeah. Raise. 
Um, bench Dave Rennie. Bench Dave Rennie. And cut um, Eddie Jones, but stay ready, mate. <laughs> EJ. <laughs> no, only because I've had more time with the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, I've only had whatever, two games. Two games. I had with him. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Like I said, that's what it usually comes down to. Yeah. You know, it's just your... How, how, how were the, I guess, what's the difference between, I guess, Razor and um, Dave Rennie? In, in coaching style, obviously, they're both New Zealand background. Um, mm. Obviously, pretty successful coaches as well. But what's your sort of like, I guess, what, what did you take from, I guess, Razor? Um, and what's sort of like the take you took from Dave Rennie when he was at the helm? Um, that's a good question, mate. That wasn't in the script. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they got me in here. <laughs> Size on the big uh, that's why the big got. bucks, mate. Uh. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like um, when I when I first signed for Crusaders, it was purely off, you know, um, like the way I played, and you know, it wasn't um, it wasn't anything that they'd done. It was just just a war. Yeah, and like. He he sort of saw like, um, you know that real explosive and sort of X factor sort of player, yeah. which um, I feel like when he stepped in, this this was um, I actually got signed from uh, Todd Blackadder, so this was before. Oh, okay, yeah, Razor. yeah, down in was that 2016, 2015? <coughs> fifteen, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, so I got I got signed from Todd Blackadder, and that was what they signed me for. Like, they saw As like you know X Factor, and you know can, um, yeah, sound like talking myself up, but yeah, nah, mate. um, and then when Razor came in, it was like he sort of, um, I sort of found, I said like when I when I when I played before that. Before Razor stepped in, before, when I played, it was I didn't know much about lineouts, didn't know much about scrum. Just you were just no in there for the sake of it, eh? I was like, you know, just play off instinct. Yeah. You know, true that. Yeah, just like eyes up, footy play. Yeah. Um, which was what I sort of grew up like, and I feel like when he come in, he sort of um. Like planted those seeds, yeah. like you know, there's more to the game than you know, than just trying to just sinks and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, 100%. so there's like there's like line out scrum, or the kick return, yeah, set piece stuff. Yeah, um, with the help of like you know some of the big dogs at the Crusaders oh, heads, that were yeah. there, yeah, which uh, helped my game massively. Yeah, like, man. Wow. Um, just sort of going off topic, or oh, not off topic, but. But um, yeah, the difference was he um, sort of started that, started sowing those seeds that there's more to the game, like set piece. You got to be good at set piece, yeah. and, you know, to play Super Rugby. Oh, true that. And can't just run around yeah. and stuff. Can't just yeah, you know, I was can't be an expecter like player like if you know, trip. got to have a certain role within the team yeah. as well, which is <laughs> and yeah, the so that you know he he really brought the best out of me and. In that sense, yeah. And then, um, yeah, when under Renz, it was, you know, just building what I'd learned from there and under him, and just trying to get better in that way. Far out. And he was pretty big on like, you know, kick, kick, returns. kick returns and stuff. There was, you know, like real structured. He um, sort of had it like another set piece. Uh. Yeah. That's pretty. So that's mad. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So like when they once once they kicked the ball to us, it was like, you've got to be here, <laughs> and this is your role. Fire like everyone had a role in that, um, in that aspect of the game. Jeez. So yeah, that's the differences that I have noticed. Which is pretty. That's mad, bro. Shout out to Razor, bro. Shout out to Razor. Yeah, mate. For instilling that into you. Because you, you see the results, obviously, you know, with the Crusaders and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, 
then when you hear something like this about Razor, you just know how sort of like, you yeah. know. That's next so level. There's, yeah, there's like a next level mm. and sort of like perspective as well with him, like just yeah. seeing the game from a different, you know, perspective to other coaches, yeah. like you said, mm. but far out, that's crazy. And it doesn't it doesn't surprise us. Like yeah. Under. Knowing that New Zealand is where they are. Mate. Yeah. When it comes to like talent wise and coaching wise, you, you sort of you explaining it like that, it's probably like mm. doesn't surprise you knowing that they're the best. Yeah, Oops. and it was like always got to give them credit, like because they're that was my first, you know, sort of like yeah, yeah, breakthrough. breakthrough coach. I mean, I played yeah. Tasman before that, which you know would build my game as well, and then to play at super level, that sort of started yeah, my yeah. hundred you know. percent, man. Crazy. Oh uh, yeah, man. We'll we'll um, touch back on yeah. to your time with the Crusaders and that, but nah. Shout out to Razor, bro, and. Uh, and those coaches yes, that you had in there. Shout um, out to Renz. Renz. <laughs> the other Renz. And shout out to EJ as well. With EJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we've got the last last segment. Oh, is that the segment? Yeah. Yeah, that was the segment, <laughs> man. No, boys, nah, I took the... Nah, yeah, right, that's we all right. We like that. We like that. That's, that's it, man. We like the yarns, man. It, you know, if it comes that way, we'll, we'll go that way. But it, um, yeah, since we're talking about, uh, you know, all the, you know, your your coaches and, and what they brought out in you. Um, we got another segment where, um, you know, we want to talk about, you know, your top five athletic forwards, you know, like just going off, you know, your sort of play style. I mean, you're quite a athletic as a, as a back rower, um, you know, kind of remind a lot of uh, people of uh, Michael Jones, some, some would say, but um, you know, we, what? Just wanted to to see who who your top five, and it could be ascending or descending order five, four, three, two, one. Or if you don't want to order them, then totally up to you. But yeah, who would be your top five, bro? <coughs> Athletic forwards. Might just go random, man. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, hundred uh, percent, man. Because there's a few of them. Artie. Oh, oh yeah, pick, pick. You'd have to be up there. Um, Akira, Yone. Drew. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's seven. Mobile, Tony. Um, Ed. box boys. Any other box? Ah, Quagga Smith. Oh, oh mate, he's good. He's good. Um, man, now they're starting to come. Yeah, through. yeah. Good, because they've um, always had. Kukowski as well. There's what's Kukowski. the other guy? The eight. Spies. Spies. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, he could go uh, on, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Go on and on. Nah, that's that's pretty good, man. Surprised you didn't have any sort of Australian players in your top five there, since you actually oh. represent Wallabies. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking uh, you were going to chuck right. in uh, Scott Higginbotham. He was quite uh, oh, yeah. athletic, oh, four four back rower. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was actually done. He's good. Um, good jumper, like yeah. good kick. Yeah, good kick. Yeah. Yeah, good, he could Chip run as chase. well, man. He's yeah. he was quite um, awesome in his prime. Adam Thompson was another one. Yeah. From, oh yeah. Uh, Probably Rundiki, <laughs> Rundiki Samo yeah, in his in his prime as well. He could play on the wing. So oh, mate, we could go on, go for uh, it. Yeah, yeah, mate. So thanks for naming. Top, thanks for naming top fifteen. Top fifteen, <laughs> mate. <laughs> thanks for naming your top five and my co-host's top five. <laughs> uh, that's all the segments, man. That we've got. Um, I think we'll just get stuck into uh, basically the journey, bro. Um, it's uh, lucky for for me and uh, me and Pluggers. Um, we uh, we've seen you uh, play from junior rugby onwards. So I think we'll just um, just talk to, talk to us about how you got into rugby at the start, and for the fans out there that doesn't know how you um, you know began playing rugby. Um, yeah. Well, um, you know, obviously being someone Islander. Rugby is pretty big in our culture, and um, uh, my old man was playing. I think all my, pretty much a lot of my family members, cousins, and that brothers played rugby. So I probably had no choice, mate. Um, <laughs> but to, yeah, fall in line. Yeah, pick up the rugby ball. That's <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, that's probably where. I think my 
probably not my love, but that's probably where I, you know, first started. First, yeah. Started playing rugby, and it's yeah. Start so it starts off, um, obviously, um, with your your old man playing. Um, you got your old brothers and cousins that started before you. You pick up the ball, um, and what what club do you end up going to when uh, this is happening? Um, yeah, so I think when I first started playing was I oh I can't remember who took me, but probably would have been my old man to Moorabbin Rams. Shout out to the Rams. Shout out to the boys, the Shout thirsty thirds as well. Who got up? Yeah. Um, yeah, and from there, I um, mate, never never looked back. Yeah. Uh, you did you did 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 your old man play at Moorabbin by any chance, or what was the club he actually played for? Mate, to just just you know, uh, uh, want to chuck out there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he actually played for Footscray. He oh wow! First, I'm pretty sure he first. Oh, Footscray. I'd have, to, I'd have yeah. to ask him, but he was at Footscray first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, um, yeah, went to Endeavour Hills. Wow, <sighs> that's, that's 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 the one I was looking for, <laughs> mate. That's the one I was yeah. looking for, mate. What um club did you boys play for? <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he was a he, um, he was a hills he was a, he was at hills and um, you know playing with all the oldies, yeah, all the oldies, oldies yeah, and, yeah, 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 some absolutely. of them still there. So yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how their connection to the Rams came about, but yeah, well, that's where we all sort of started yeah, playing. Started, as, yeah, as, yeah, as as kids. I guess as um like w- when you mentioned before about um you know you you just picked it up. Like the rugby ball because you saw obviously your old man and all your cousins doing it and you said you didn't fall in love with the game. When was that sort of like period where you actually like felt like, ah, man, I can actually do something myself here and, you know, pick up the ball and actually fall in love, make make a living out of it? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, um, I didn't fall in love with rugby when I was, yeah. you know, that age. But when I – if I can pinpoint one – one time it would have been um, when we were all playing, I reckon. True. Um, 18s, you know, we had a, oh, you know. Uh, nah, but don't mention it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had players like, you know, yourselves. Uh, so, um, nah, don't, don't, don't. Don't. We didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but that's honestly where, you know, we, you know, we took that comp out that year. And that was my last year. At Rams, 18s, when we won that grand final. Um, and that's honestly where I sort of, yeah, so, you know, fell in love with it. I was like, man, I think just from winning that final was like massive for me, eh? Yeah. I was on, on top of the world, mate. And yeah, I think if I did pinpoint one, one time, it w- would have been that under 18s. Yeah, that's that's mad. That's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm hijacking this uh, <laughs> this podcast <laughs> at the moment with my questions, yeah, but um, I guess like you know, obviously we we know um, you know what positions you played when when you grew up, but for the viewers at home that didn't know um, Pete Samu and what he what position he actually played when he first started playing, say sort of rep rugby, um, what what position was that? Um. Rep rugby. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, you're you know, when you played under eighteens school boys, you there was there was actually a position that you were actually playing and I think a lot of people that will be viewing this yeah. podcast will be quite surprised at the position you were actually playing. <laughs> um Well yeah, now you mentioned it. Um I actually under eighteens school boys I got picked as a halfback behind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> behind uh <laughs> Oh. Andy Molimo. <laughs> I was uh, picked as halfback and throughout the whole comp, I never played there once. <laughs> <laughs> um, so shout out no, to Fergo, man. Yeah, shout funny out to say, Fergo. Funny you say that, actually. I, so, yeah, remember I got picked as a nine. Yeah. And the whole comp, the I whole was comp. playing at yeah, the back that's, row. That's what I was... Uh, I was yeah, even like Locke. Crazy. And Locke as well. Locke in the final. Oh, oh, that was crazy. Was Were you playing, like, just saying... <laughs> Just saying off that, like, you were playing halfback. Was that because, like, your brothers were playing halfback? Like, was it just because, oh, yeah, I'm just going to play halfback because my brother's 
at, yeah, at playing well, halfback or <clears throat> yeah, I think so because under sixteens or fourteens, I can't remember. I was on the wing and yeah, playing yeah, twelve. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Like fourteen, sixteens. And I yeah, just slowly made my way into the forwards. <laughs> I got picked yeah as a halfback in schoolboys, and that was the first time I'd I think oh no. I think that was the first time. That was, was when it? I sort of migrated to the back row. I th- yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I think that would have been your... Yeah, that's it was definitely I mean. that year though, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Because you did, you did get the growth spurt. Yeah, yeah. mate. You're the tallest halfback we've ever seen, mate. Yeah. It's got, it's got taller than the, the whales. Bloody the Adam whale Coleman. Shot. Adam Coleman at nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but, uh, long yeah. story short, that's how I got to... The back row. It's back row. Nice. All right, bro. So um, obviously after the 18s happens, uh, you're on you're on a high. Uh, Mrabin, we've just won uh, the under-18s competition here in Melbourne. And then um, your options, your options open up. So obviously after 18s, a lot of kids uh, can either go interstate, choose to stay here and try to have a crack at first grade or uh, go overseas. Play New Zealand, play New Zealand, or one of those uh, clubs over there. Um, what makes you or gets you to England, playing for the club in England after the 18s? Um, wait, can we rewind a bit? Oh, after so, we don't get picked for, so we don't get picked for the combined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. Yeah. So we play Vic Schoolboys. We won. Yeah, 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 against yeah, WA. Cop out. yeah. Um, and we're waiting for the, the announcement of the combined states to go and play into the Div the one, Div comp. one comp. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, name my name doesn't get read out along with a few of the other boys. Um, and yeah, that, that was probably the that was the all time <laughs> low for me, I think. <laughs> You know, going from winning the 18s final, yeah, yeah, winning yeah. The to stage. then to then to then not, you know, not getting picked, yeah. Um, and fuck, from there, I've always had a chip on my shoulder. Eh? Yeah, that's good, man. And that's my that's fu- dang, that's fucking awesome, bro. Like, you know, I've, yeah, I probably haven't. I've never really sp- yeah. said that, you know, to anyone or to most people, but um, yeah. And from there, we don't get picked. <laughs> so I remember we were sitting we were in the car on the way home oh, to play yeah. this game against literally from a team from not getting picked we're driving to a game um, against a team from New Zealand eh? yeah it's a club that, so we have a um, we have a Moravan game a club game <coughs> and the guys that don't get picked in that combines uh, team they have to then back up and play for the Moravan game yeah so you weren't there because you got picked Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the guys that were unlucky <laughs> was me, Pete, me, Pete, and Azza. Oh, not Azza, Lunny. <laughs> and then we go over to Lunny's brother's house. Yeah, so we're on the way to this game and we're like out for the kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like angry as from, the, from not getting picked, you know, depressed. And um, we're playing this team and they're doing the haka from New Zealand. They're doing the haka. And I'm pretty sure one of the boys spat on them. <laughs> but that's, that's another story. Um, you know, as you play this game and we're just out to, out for the kill. Yeah. We're just trying to fucking hurt someone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, all time low there. So, um, just giving the viewers a bit of a perspective and context. Yeah. Context. Where that leads to. Um, so, our under 18s coach for Moravan, um, Mike Silcock. Shout out. He's uh, English. And he linked me up with a club in the UK. Um, they're um, St. Ives. Oh, Saint that's Ives. in St. Ives. St. Ives right? down in Cornwall. Shout out to St. Ives there. Shout um, out. Yeah, he links me up with that team. And they're, they're in like, I uh, can't remember what league they're in, but... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll head over there for a season. Uh, that would have been massive, bro. Yeah, it's massive. Um, 
move. Culture shock as well? Or uh, was yeah, it probably like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But like, I wasn't, um, I mean, I probably was homesick a little bit, but. Because this would have been your first time sort of out of Australia, away yeah. from home. Away living, from home, living, yeah, living on my own. Yeah. Um, so that's where, that's where I am um, after all that. Um, yeah, playing for St. Ives and I'm playing like first grade. First grade rugby over there? Yeah, with like grown men and I'm ah. only basically 18, still 18. 18. Yeah, yeah, basically still, still so a teen, mate. I'm over there and I'm like, fuck, um, this is me. Like I was, um, you know, I was, wasn't really a drinker before I, I mean, <laughs> we, drank, we drank a little bit, but yeah. When I got there, far out, I um, probably turned into an alcoholic. No. I reckon <laughs> the culture's different. Culture's there, different, though. Like, right? Yeah, rugby culture yeah. as well. Rugby culture, and but man, I'm grateful for you know Saint going Ives. through that yeah. and experiencing man. that. Um, I remember going on away trips. The they're loading up the beers before all the. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was, that was Sounds good like times. a place. That was good times good there. To go to. Um, yeah, to this day, I still got some mates that I still keep in contact with. Oh, no, nice, nice yeah, man. From there. So, yeah, nah, that's where I am. That's where I head to from Melbourne. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. So, you uh, you head over to England. You uh, have a crack at um, playing first grade over there, play a season, and then you come back to Melbourne. Yeah. <coughs> and then uh, what are your options there? And your next move, Brisbane. So come back to Melbourne, and um, uh, I think it was my brother got in contact with Diggers. Diggers, shout out Diggers, man. Shout out Diggers, yeah. and asked if I wanted to go up there and play play footy, and you know have a crack. Um, so I was like, yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean. Um, from from going to the UK, my goal was to play, you know, play pro. Play pro. Nice. So I was like, yeah, <coughs> go and have a crack and whatever. Yeah, went up went up to Brizzy. So I came back to Melbourne, and then not long, left again to to Brizzy. Stayed with Diggers, um, and played for Sunnybank. So I, I was there for two years. Um, played like when they call it first grade. First grade is under prem. Oh, first oh okay. Yeah, first yeah. grade, yeah. I think I started. I would have started like second or something, third. Yeah. Um, then sort of made my way up to first grade, and I was sort of first grade prem, like bench for prem. Yep, just in and out yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. <coughs> um, but like staying with diggers, like uh, you know. Watched how he went about um, his day. His day, yeah. Because um, by yeah. then he's like he's but entrenched yeah. into the Wallabies. Yeah. So yeah, this and is 2011. Oh, oh wow! Well. So that's 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 but peak. Yeah, and he's you know right at the top there, killing it. And um, I remember he would he would have he would have made like one of the I don't know if it was a World Cup camp or one of the camps. Comes back with like bags of Wallabies gears, and I'm like, holy fuck, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's just like, give me five years. Yeah, wish that would be wish, nice. Wish, wish. Yeah, so wish I'm like, holy, that's <laughs> what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, not so much, you know, you don't think about outside, you think about. You know, that's, that's mad. That's, that's, yeah, and that's a mad thing, bro. Just to touch on that, that's like. I remember that's like for us <laughs> as kids, they eh, growing up, we'd always yeah. be like looking at the guys that make state like that. Yeah, you know when yeah, you make yeah. the state team, you come back with the bag. Yeah, and you're and like, and they got all the clothes it's like, like that's Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's that's so yeah, like this is peak diggers 2011, um, 2011, 2012. I was there, I'm pretty sure, or 10, 11. I think it was 10, 11. 10, 11. Yeah, 10, 11. And that's when they took out the Super Rugby. Yeah, the Reds. Mate, that would have been <laughs> um, crazy. Yeah, so I, I was up there playing for Sunnybank. Um, 
two years, um, things weren't going too good. It's when he, uh, I was playing, you know, first grade and prem, sort of in between. Um, yeah, and then uh, got um, got in contact with um, one of our boys, say Lala, Lam. Shout out Lala, bro. Shout out the brain. He was playing first grade in Sydney for uh, in the Shoot Shield comp and sort of messaged him and asked, oh, you know, you reckon I can get a crack down there and <coughs> in Sydney. In Sydney, you know, he didn't he didn't promise anything either. Like he was like, yeah, bro, like, you know, we can help you out, come down and see how you go, and then. Um, yeah, so I went, um, so I left Brisbane, left Sunnybank and, um, head down to Brizzy. I think I drove down there. To Sydney? Oh, down to Sydney. Yeah. Went down to Sydney and, um, yeah. The rest is sort of, and I guess like, like, um, for the viewers that, at home, like, I think for them to get a sort of scope on how hard it was for us to sort of make it out of Melbourne, eh? mm. um, back then, like, you're probably explaining the sort of lengths that we had to go to to try and make it out yeah. of Melbourne because Melbourne wasn't really known, and it probably still is to this day, yeah. still not known as a rugby state. Um, and obviously, um, for people at home, like, the under 18s competition back then was like a sort of like a beacon of you know opportunity for for a lot of mm. us um and if we made it to the div one comp um made the school boys whatever uh then a lot of our pathways would, would open yeah. not as not as big as it is now yeah. like you know like they've got pathways like to bloody the rebels they've yeah. got a rebels academy back then we didn't have that yeah. and I think it's like just kudos to yourself for just sticking, you know, and staying resilient, you know, yeah. for throughout the whole thing. Like, you know, going to England, going to Queensland, coming back down to Sydney. Yeah. I mean, like, it's a massive, yeah. it's a massive sort of like, you know, like step, it's especially for yourself. You're mm. you're 18. You're you're moving away from home. Um, you're probably not going to be home for the next couple of years. No. So you, you know, ideally, you're coming in and out of Melbourne, and I, I guess for people to actually get a scope of it you know these are the sort of things we kind of had to do back then to like you know sort of make it if you didn't yeah. make that you know that uh, initial squad course, for yeah. the you know for school boys or anything like that then you're pretty much like known as a you know yeah. has been sort of thing yeah. like here in melbourne like if you weren't going to play first grade here um you'd had to go somewhere else to play yeah. you know what i mean and and hopefully make it from there so mm. I think that's just I, I just sorry I just thought I'll I'll just chime in there because I think a lot of people don't understand like you know especially in the rugby aspect here in Melbourne how hard it was for players to to make it out of here. You look at Digby Yuani who who made it from Queensland. He's a Melbourne born player. Yeah. Um Ben Tapwa is another one. Christian Lely Funnel is another one. He had to go to Canberra mm. and he's made it from Canberra, yeah. you know what I mean? So like yourself, you know you've you've, you've gone you know, everywhere and almost anywhere to, to sort of try and make yeah. it. But, you know, kudos to yourself to just sticking in the in the fight and, and really, you know, coming out the, the other end there. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. No, spot on, man. What, what but, like, saying? it was – I feel like it was – my parents made it easy for me, you know? Yeah, true. You know, they – Shout they, yeah, they, shout out to, to mum and dad, man. Mom yeah, dad. they um, gave me the – like, I get, told them, oh, you know, this is what I want to do. You know, I was, I was bad in school. You know, well, it wasn't no, the we all were, mate. <laughs> we all were, mate. It's all right. It wasn't the greatest, mate. I don't, um, I don't think we passed, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, my parents always said, you know, make sure, you know, school's good. You know, um, and I remember going to club games sometimes, play Kaya's. Yeah. <laughs> Then that's bad for the fans that they yeah, know what so that means. That means bad, like <laughs> bad game. Um, had a bad game, and then you know we've all been there. Yeah. Jump in the car with your dad, and then you're joining it. He's driving, driving home, changing the gears like hard <laughs> ass, <laughs> turning the corners, <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going hundies like you know, fuck. Um, you know, but for some it'd be different, like you know, but for us, you know. Islanders, man, we copped it bad. Like, 
there was no no care yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> um, you know, I copped it like so many times. Yeah. You know, you play, you know, bad, bad, <laughs> um, wasted petrol coming wasted, all the way yeah. here, and you play like that. <clears throat> and then I remember my dad told me he was like, "Nah, you you're gonna give up rugby, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and focus on your schooling." And I said, "Nah." Mate, you like, mean, I was like, did you say that nah. under your breath? No, <laughs> no, nah, nah. I actually told him. Oh, no told him. Way. <laughs> oh, mate, mate, that would have been crazy nah. to watch. <laughs> I told him, like, I remember I was in tears and I was like, nah, I want to I wanna play, you know. Ah, that's mad. This is what that's I want awesome, to do. Love hearing that. And then he, um, I think it was after coming back from the UK was when I had that sort of, sort of that chat. Chat. Like, oh, he's like, <laughs> oh, you know. Might as well just start working and looking after the family. Looking after the fam. Yeah. Um, and I was like, nah. He sort of gave me like one more, one more crack at it. <coughs> um, and that was when I went to Brizzy. Then another crack in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> and like, so is right if I go into Sydney? Yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, man. Go. So yeah. So um, in Sydney now. Time yeah, so the Wicks. I'm in Sydney. Playing at the Wicks. Up the Wicks. Um, um, staying in Coogee. And then... Um, fuck, playing... I think I was playing fourth fourth grade oh, or something. Mate, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, we we had a... We were staying with Lala as well. Me, Rennie. Yeah. Nate Dog. Goise. Goise. Um, and there's a few other rugby boys. Um, so we were at, all at Randwick and I think I'm pretty sure I started playing. My first game for Randwick was fourth grade. Yeah. Against Gordon. Yeah. And we're playing up the top field at um, Latham, is it? Yeah, Latham. Yeah. Latham, the top field. And then from all in the same day from fourth grade, I benched for thirds and then benched for seconds. And oh. then bench for first grade. So I had to drive to, um, is it, where's um, Gordon's Field? Chatswood. Chatswood, yeah. Had to drive from Coogee to Chatswood to bench for first grade. Yeah. Um, and I think from there is where, so this is all in one day. From there, that's when I started playing first grade at Randwick. It was the, yeah. And it was, yeah. It was the cra it was the craziest thing, bro, yeah. to watch. Because I think Andy was playing in Canberra at the time, and he comes up to Sydney. I think the back end of that year. Yeah, I think it was back end of twenty. But that game, I still remember I it now. Yeah. That game, that day, <coughs> yeah, where you played like four games, and he scored like two tries in every game. In every game. <laughs> <laughs> in all one, I've never seen it before. Like so, you know, when so you, not you, much has changed, eh? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Usually someone will just back up. They'll play seconds or back up first grade. And that's it. Jeez. But this guy backs up from fourth grade all the way up to prems and scores like two tries every single game. And then the the coach the coach says you're playing first grade for the the rest of the year after that. Eh? Yeah, something like that. Like then from then on, I played first grade yeah. after that. Man. But um, like yeah, like going back to you know when Lala said you know he didn't promise me anything. I knew like. I had to start somewhere, you know, start at the bottom and try and work my way up. Yeah. And it just so happened that I worked my way up in, in a day. Yeah. <coughs> so got to play first grade and fuck, I was stoked there. But I got to play, got to play with Nate. Um, this was our first year. You were playing Colts there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The oldest Colts player. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah. I, was, I was still Colts here, yeah. yeah. I'm a year younger than Pete, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, you're like a month. <laughs> yeah, but in the new year, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyone who was playing Colts back then, this guy was. Um, nah, but so that first year, I played first grade and was playing with um, got to play with Lala and yeah, I can't remember who else was there. I think Stephen Hoyles was there. Oh yeah, Hoyles was oh, there. Oh, yeah, he played in that yeah, year first year as well. Shout out to Hoyles, he just shout, they just won the shoot. Shout, shout out, out coach, the weeks, man. weeks, yeah, coach um, Hoyles. <coughs> yeah, so from then on, um, so first grade, yeah, 
So yeah. you you so you then you end up becoming a regular member for the first grade throughout uh, for the rest of that season after that uh, yeah. game against Gordon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's at the end of the season is when you get approached from the Tars. Yeah. So from so from there, um, there's there, it was an academy. It was like I forgot what it was called. It, it was, was like, like an Australian academy, eh? Yeah. Like where I think because they stopped all the um, academies for each. Yeah, and sort of yeah. like that region, eh? And they just made it talent a talent net NTS or something, or it might have been something else. But um, and that was like that was like you know our first um, introduction into like professional. So I was, I remember I was working at the time. And I had to get up early to go training at Moor Park at like 5 a.m. or something. Uh, it was like yeah, academy yeah. time, you know. Yeah. So going in training at the Tars um, before we go to work. So from there, um, you know, go back to work, work whatever hours, and then back in the Arvo. Back in the Arvo. Fuck. Yeah. For training. And that was only, uh, that might have been like three three days a week maybe or something. Yeah, that's still pretty. Yeah, that's still pretty intense. Compared, eh? compared like, to some of the other guys, because not yeah. all the guys were doing that. Because were you guys were you training like um, Randwick in between as well? Yeah, so or Randwick was was on the Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then the Monday. <sighs> oh, yeah, I can't remember crazy. what it was, but it was. I think Tuesday, Thursday was those morning sessions. Damn. So yeah, before work. So yeah, I was doing that, and that was like, I thought I was the man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been flat out but yeah like it was flat out um, schedule yeah I still remember like going to work thinking fuck fuck this <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to get, I, get out I, of here but I always knew like you know we always grew up to like you know you gotta fucking work hard yeah, to, yeah. you know and I knew I just had to you know stick stick it out Stick that out and, you know, whatever comes, comes, you know, leave that in the hands of the almighty, <laughs> yeah, the, man, the man above, man. That's yeah. mad. So, then so yeah, from, from Academy, um, then, uh, get asked to do a preseason with the Tars. This was under Michael Checker. Um, yeah, doing preseason training and this is. Pretty sure it was full time. Um, yeah, with the so I stopped working, done preseason, um, and there was other guys there. Like, so we all like there was four, four or five of us like fighting for the last spot, last contract spot. And um, can't remember who the others were, but it was I remember Ben Volavola was one of them. Uh, was not Mikey one of them? Oh, one maybe Mikey. Yeah, yeah. I maybe think it was Mike. the other one. Was well, Skelton as well? Skelton was, I'm pretty sure was he, he already might yet? have been signed. Yeah, he was already, already signed. Oh, I think nice. he was signed. Um, yeah, but this is, so this is for like the last. The one. last. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, training full time and I thought, you know, I made it. Like, this is what I wanted to do, you know, the whole time. The whole time, yeah. Um, you know, pro, rock up in the morning, um, you know, gym train on the field was like all I wanted. Maybe not train on the field, but <laughs> <laughs> just the, uh, the you know, professional just, yeah, you like know, environment. And um, yeah, so from there, um, we do we do preseason. I get to play um, a couple preseason games against, I think we played the Blues in Auckland. Oh yeah, we played in Tasmania against the Rebels, and this was uh, Izzy Folau's first year. Rugby. First year, ah, yeah. yeah. So I got to you know see him at see training, him anything. and I was like, fuck, crazy training, training with this guy. I was training with Luigi as well. Oh, Luigi was Luigi at the time. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Izzy and Luigi. Luigi. Um, yeah, and there was heaps of heaps of boys at the Tars at the time, and that was end of twenty. 13, eh? Yeah, that would have been 13 because that's Michael Checker's year. Yeah. It was 13, eh? He took, end of took over. 2013. So end of 2013, um, I do all the preseason, do the 
play those games and then I'll get told that um, that I wasn't you missed out? On. Yeah, that I missed out. Oh, man. Um, so then I'm at another all-time, probably not all-time, but, you know, I'm like still on a high from being in that environment. Um, and But I don't get that contract. That contract. Yeah. And then I'm, fuck. I'm just like, fuck, what do I do now, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And then, so so after that, um, you end up coming back to Melbourne. Yeah, that's right. So, <coughs> yeah, don't make that last, um, that last cut for the squad. And then, um, yeah, then I move back to Melbourne and I'm just fuck, bumming around at home. Mum's like, are you going to work or... And I, at that, that time, I was like, pretty sure I had a manager at the time. I can't remember. But I had a, um, like this training contract in France that I got offered. Oh, nice. Um, sorry, let me rewind. I'll go back. Because when I came back to Melbourne, um, we done a preseason with the Rebels. Oh, yeah, remember? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were... We were doing preseason, and um, I think it was just us two. Yeah, it? so we'll, I remember doing a preseason, and fuck, wasn't really being able. Did yeah. we play? We didn't play any games, eh? I don't know if we played the games. Yeah, nah, because yeah, might I don't have think been, so. You just left to New Zealand before the games. Oh, and then I didn't. Um, something came up, and I didn't rock up to the training. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. So and then they played. Yeah, so we done preseason with the Rebels and and like that was another crack at trying to make make that you know. Yeah. And then um, I got offered this French, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a training contract or something. Um, and I had the papers in my hand, and I remember I signed signed it everything. And the day I was meant to send that back to. That this French club, um, I get a call from Tasman, ITM. Ooh. Oh yeah, from uh, Tony Lewis who was Not at Randwick. Um, he calls me and goes, "Oh, you know, what are you up to?" And I'm like, "Oh, fuck, just um, just about I'm, to sign my life away. I'm about to head to France. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm about to head to France, mate. Everything's already signed." Um, on the same day. The same day. Damn. I was that's, at home in the lounge. That's not God's plan, bro. And everything was signed. That's I just, crazy. You know, send it back. And I get a call, like, oh, what are you up to? I'm just like sitting around. Um, and he puts me onto the coach, Tasman Marco's coach, which was um, Kieran Kane at the time. And he's like, oh, mate, I got a, I got a spot here for you um, in the squad. Um, fucking, I'm trying to act normal. When I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to act normal on the phone. You're doing big something. And trying to make my voice sound like I'm not excited, but I was fucking over the moon. Eh? <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, you know, have a think about it. There's a spot here for you if you're keen." Um, full we'll, full we'll contract as well, yeah, like full contract. Full contract. Oh, man, that's crazy. Damn. And he was like, "Oh, we'd love to have you." And yeah, so hung up the phone, called called Law. <laughs> that the other contract well, from I, I miss his Law or something, and I was like, bro, I just got an um, offer from Tasman because he'd been he'd been there. Yeah, obviously. shout, shout out, out to, to Law, man. man. Pete's older brother, and um, yeah, fuck, he said, fuck, man, go, go, go for it, you know. And from then, I was like, let them know. I was like, yo, took the French contract, put it in the. <laughs> <laughs> Put in the rubbish. Um, <laughs> fuck, and then, yeah, told them I was keen and I had to, um, went over to Nelson. Went over to Nelson. Um, did I just keep going? Yeah, yeah keep going. Yeah, yeah, right, go. yeah, so, sorry, I just... How long after that, from the contract, straight away? As soon um, as you signed, you straight in there? I can't remember how long. A couple weeks. I think it was straight away, maybe a couple of weeks or something. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, so I got the okay and 
flew to Nelson and I had to play club in Nelson before the uh, ITM season. Oh. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, that's right. Was playing, um, played club for Waimea Old Boys down in Nelson. That's uh, Golly's club, eh? Uh, is it, was it his club at the time or no? Okay. No, no, no. no he's in Christchurch. Oh, jokes. Yeah, see? Yeah. I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so yeah, playing club in, in Nelson, um, just waiting out for the start of Tasman season. Um, and, you know, um, living with a family there in Nelson, just in the room. Um, um, yeah, so after the club <coughs> season, Tasman season starts. And um and it's like you know professional um, environment off the bat straight away yeah pretty much straight away like um, I think that was twenty fourteen my first season there so um, yeah that's how I that's how I got to to New Zealand oh my wow. um, man you know? that's crazy so from you know that that journey of going to the UK and not making it. Queensland not making it, Sydney not making it, Melbourne not making it. Straight over NZ and went to NZ and welcome you open arms. Yeah, and oh, I, I always thought like, fuck, why, you know, why am I not? How do I not get picked? In Oz, 100%. You know, my home. Yeah, yeah. and yet and get picked over. And then here. get picked over here. Yeah. You know, that's so true. But okay. like, I don't know from. Like I've played a lot of my footy in Oz, so you know they were, they must have seen something or somewhere, or, um, and just you know backed it. Um, yeah, and twenty fourteen was my first season with uh, Tasman. That's yeah. mad, bro. How's a breakout season in Tasman? You have a breakout season, the highlights in it. All the boys down here were backing it, supporting you from down here. Um, how does the transition or who makes that call or yeah, who makes that call to you after the Tasman season when uh you get asked to join the Crusaders? Um so from so from Tasman, we're done at Tasman. Um they go into uh this Crusader Knights program, which is like like a academy Crusaders oh, academy, academy. You know? oh okay yeah, yeah and they have a they play against like the Landers Academy Canes Academy kind of we didn't really play the North Island um, academies yeah. but um, yeah so I, I got picked we had a trial for that and then that that trial was like me Richie Richie was already he was like he was, he was signed at Crusaders I'm pretty sure but we were all in that trial. Me, him, Johnny, Fauli. Um, oh. All in that game. All in that the game. The trial. Yeah. Inga oh. Fino. Fuck, some big some names. Players, yeah, right? some big names there. Um, and we're, yeah, we trial for this team. And, you know, we, we end up making this Crusader Knights team. And um, might it might be like a two-month. Yeah. Um, competition or something so we we travel down meet um, the Highlanders halfway um, and we play against them like every like two weeks and or not oh. and like the boys from the the top team like who aren't playing will will come down and play um, for the Knights for the Knights, the Knights. and so that is it, while that's going is the Super Rugby going yeah so oh, that's, that's so going it's in same season time. yeah oh, it's in okay, season yeah, yeah. And but it's only a short time, yep. so um, yeah. So I get picked in that. Um, we play Highlanders, we play um, Hurricanes, and I remember the I remember the one of the Landers games. We had heaps of the big boys from, or well not not heaps of them, but Nems came. This was when Nems was at Crusaders. Crusaders, Nems was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nems was playing so Nems. for um, the Knights. And fuck, it's it was I was like fuck, pretty gun playing with some of these guys, you know. Um. I uh, remember we we fly up to Wellington, play the Hurricanes Academy. Yeah. 
and we've got like pretty much the whole Crusaders starting <laughs> starting fifteen. <laughs> Probably not fifteen, but like a lot of them. Like we had, I'm pretty sure we had Moody, Cody Taylor, um, Owen Franks, what Sam Whitelock, Scott Barrett. This was before. I think Scott Barrett was there, but sort of, sure. you know. Damn. We had, I think, Jordy Telfour was there. Matt Todd, Kieran Reed was the eight. 50 nil or what? <laughs> oh, I can't remember. Far out. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was a gun side, eh? We had Richie at 10. I think it was Eddie Inari at 9. 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember who else. We had, maybe, oh, we had Nems on one wing. Nafi Tuitavaki on the other oh, wing. Tuitavaki. Yeah, so basically it was a super rugby a team. Super rugby yeah. team, man. So and I was I was on the bench, I'm pretty sure, for this this game. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, and I was just like shocked. There. I was like, you know, getting to train with these guys, warm up with them, and then come on and play like with these guys. I was fuck over the moon, eh? And starstruck. Um, yeah, it's pretty much starstruck. Playing. Pretty sure I scored that game too. Nice. Oh, nice. Just, I love that. Love that. Just love that. Love <laughs> had to sneak that one in but um <laughs> so this crusader knights competition's finished um and um i get awarded the crusader knight of the year so it's like the you know player the of, the of the year or oh. player of the sort of what do you call yeah, it yeah you would say player yeah. of the year right? player of the year yeah because it's yeah pretty much for the duration and i yeah so i got awarded that um Crusader Knight Award. And from there, this is, this would have been 2015, mid season. Um, I get called into the top squad. Um, it gives me like goosebumps talking about this. Oh, that's I get, I Straight get, away. I get called into the top squad for injury cover. One of the guys, one of the back rows got injured. And so I'm in there, I'm in their full time program. So I move. From Nelson to Christchurch, Whoa. and I'm living with uh, Nems at this time. Oh, wow. and like oh, no. me, Nems, um, pretty sure Jimmy Tupa was there. So we're we're living together. Like he was like, yeah, come stay. I got a spare room. So I was like, yeah, sweet. And fuck, like every day I wake up and think, fuck, it's crazy. So I'd rock up to training That's first right. day. Um, funny, my first day, I get put on a on the the backfield to train, and like bot had me the trainer, and like he's like, oh, we'll go run you out the back. So w we walk to the back, and Richie McCall's running by himself, and <laughs> the trainer's there. He's like, oh, yeah, just jump in with um, jump in with Richie, and you know, run with him. <laughs> And he's doing a um, he's doing a broken bronco. They say it's like you just do one rep of the bronco. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you have a break in between every rep. So, anyways, I'm like, fuck, yo, keen as. And then, so we're starting on the try line, about to take off, and we take off first length 20, 20 and 20 back. Yeah, twenty back. And me and Richie like running together. You know, I was like, fuck yeah, <laughs> twenty and back. <laughs> 40 and back and then 60 and back and the man's like kept one pace and I'm starting to slow down <laughs> <laughs> and then we come back rest and then the second rep go again and he's just just one pace like going and I'm getting slower and slower my back's uh, spasming <laughs> spasming and my head's going <laughs> and they had to they had to pull me out oh no yeah, way they had to pull me out and like oh yeah, that's enough because my back was starting to go <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh we can't have another injured guy can't have the guy covering the injured <laughs> guy injured. Injured. <laughs> get injured as well <laughs> um that's uh, so crazy. that's that's how that came about like me i got that's my first you know, introduction, introduction into sort into of like into the crusaders, <laughs> crusaders. Um, see the top dog so i'm just you know i i get to um you know train with these guys and train train against them and yeah. like you know I knew I wasn't gonna play, you know. I was ho I was hoping, but I knew I wasn't gonna play that year. Mm. I was just coming in for cover and just doing my bit there. But um, 
man, from there, like, um, sort of grew, like, our bond, like, me, Rich, um, Davey. All the younger boys? Well, yeah. So all us boys, like, you know, have this little group. Fuck. And probably, like, some of the best times there. Because we, you know, we weren't playing. We were just, like, the... Or just training. Just and the, and fringe, just the fringe players. The fringe players, yeah, you know. And just, you know, we get to hang out after training. And, you know, That's boys, boys would always come over, um, chill at our house. Because Nems was, like... Yeah. Top G. Yeah. <laughs> man, we had some good times, eh? Like Shout out to those boys, man. Yeah. Uh, Adi. So from twenty end of twenty fifteen, um, season's done and I sort of don't have, you know anything planned or Yeah, like anything, you know, I'm still like I'm still with uh Tasman. So I'm thinking oh, I'll move back to Nelson, Nelson and just play club, work and play club. Um, so then I get, man, I get, um, a contract, contract offer from Todd Blackadder for the next year. For the following year? Yeah. Was um, that a full contract as well? Pretty sure it was there. Yeah, I think it was. That's my, um, I think it was for two years too. So, nice. um, yeah, I signed that. 16, 17 was when, yeah, yeah, so 16, I signed two years, I signed, um, yeah, my first, like, prof professional, contract professional contract for, you know, a super rugby team. Wow. How, was, how was that convo when you had to call mum and dad and tell them? Because that's something that, like, yeah, kids man, dream about, bro. I just, like, even, even, like, playing, you know, Tasman. Yeah. Uh, they were massive. And that was massive for them. They were so proud, eh? And all my family were so proud and Andrew. Um I was I was pretty happy and content there, but um fuck. fuck. Yeah, just blessings keep coming. It mate. just kept coming yeah, and I was yeah. like, fuck. Keep them coming, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't whinging over here, man. But man, yeah, it was probably it was the best to, you know, tell them that, you know, I got got signed. Especially at that club as well. Yeah, at such a prestigious man. Far out, man. Great club. Ba basically the best, if we're being honest. Yeah. All right, so you signed with Crusaders and that, and you have like, is it three years you stay with them? Uh, Two to three yeah, years. Yeah. Three, three years. years. I think it's three years you stay with them. Um, you win three chips. Two chips. Nah, so, yeah, 2016 was Todd Blackhead's last year. Yeah. So... Didn't win that one. Yeah. Um, and then 17 was when Razor started. Razor started. And oh, that's when his got the, the winning streak started. started. Oh, was yeah. it six <laughs> years in a row or something, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool to go from, like, you know, making, I think we made semi or something, 2016. And then going from there to how different it was from there to when Razor come in. And we won the comp. Going all the way. Mate. Those celebrations were crazy, man. Yeah. It was... It would, would have been good. It was pretty big, eh? But I was... 2017 was... We played in Africa against Lions. Oh, 2017. What was it? 2018 when I came over? Yeah, 2018. Yeah, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, right. You just guys took 18 as well, eh? Yeah, 17, 18. 18 in New Zealand. I was... I, uh, I ended but up yeah. on the team bus there. <laughs> <laughs> injury yeah. cover. Yeah, yeah injury <laughs> cover. <laughs> For Moody. <laughs> <laughs> but but so yeah, so that's that's how that all, you know. And so looking back at my journey from 18s, all winning, the way, winning yeah. 18s, I'd always wanted that feeling from when we won the final. Yeah. And then got to experience it at, you know, at the top level, which, fuck. Not many Can't people, back, yeah. Eh? Not many people can say that they've uh, won a Super Rugby title. 100%. Especially with uh, with a couple of Crusaders as well, yeah, with those legends. So, uh, so you you win a um, couple of chips there with Crusaders, mm. and then um, your contract comes up at the end of the year, and you got offers from a couple of clubs. What made you end up uh, choosing Brumbies over the others? Um, to be honest, I always um, I always knew that I was going to come back home. 
to play. And I always said that it'd either be either be um, Reds or Brums. Not the Rebels? Nah, not the Rebels. Maybe because I was holding a grudge against them because <laughs> they didn't sign me. Yeah, um, fair but enough. <laughs> yeah, I was... Um, I always said it'll, it'll, it'll be Reds or um, Brums. And then, um, yeah, that, that call... I think my oh my agent actually sort of shopped me around and yeah and then got interest from Brums. I don't think oh I don't think I got any interest from anywhere else though. I think no, I think you you I, I was talking to you at the time, you told me maybe Chiefs. I'm not sure if that was the oh. time or if yeah, it was maybe. just Reds and Brumbies that maybe. were really pushing for you. Oh, pushing for you. But I I think I knew that I was going home so surely regardless. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so Dan McKellar, the Brums coach at the time, he he calls me. He actually calls me a year. Um. So 2017, he calls me, and he's he's like, "Oh, keen to have you down at Brums for 2018," and I'm like, "Oh, nah, I might stay one more year. Feel like you know, I can learn a lot more." Um, playing New Zealand, playing yeah. there, um, and then yeah, end of actually before before the June test in twenty eighteen, um, he I get a call, so my agent shot me around again and hit up Brums, um, to see if they're still keen, and Dan calls back again and he's like, yeah mate, how you going and like. Still keen to have you. Oh. So then I'm like um, calling. And I know like Brums is pretty, you know, like successful club. And yeah, um, I, I remember messaging um, Christian because he was there at the time and just asking him, you know, what the club's like. And um, like, this is me already. I sort of already knew what Brums was like. Yeah. But um, the actual clubs, they not the ones. <laughs> nah, uh, shout out to Christian anyway. We're not talking about shout out to Christian <laughs> Rums rugby. Nah. Um, yeah, asked him what the club was like, and he was like, "Ah oh, man, like I'll, I'll enjoy it, and you know they're pretty, pretty successful club. You know, like have big history and some good boys down there. Yeah. So, um, man, they pretty much S- sealed the deal. Yeah, and I had I had family <coughs> in Canberra as well, so True I was that. like, oh. And I wasn't going back, coming back to Melbourne. Like, and then, um, yeah, it wasn't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah, and then yeah, I'm and during that period as well, like it was there was quite like a massive, like I don't know, like a media uproar as well with uh, the New Zealand um, side not releasing you, or or to some extent um, not releasing that sort of contract side. How was that for you? Like you know, I, I know you probably didn't. Um, handle all that stuff um, but like obviously you know we're seeing it on you know rugby.com.au and, and things like that and, and on other media sort of rugby media posts that you know there was a bit of like you know you know a lot of push and pull from from ARU and also NZRU to sort of release you to come over here mm. um, you know what was like I guess your experience with uh, with that and and you know were you just like just get me over there, mate. I don't give a shit how you do it, but just get me over there. <laughs> or were uh, you just more so like, I'll just let let my agent deal with it? And see. yeah, I think a, a little bit, but I didn't want um, I didn't want to leave like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, on bad terms. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Fuck. And New Zealand rugby gave me my first, you know, crack. First yeah, crack. And, yeah. Um, I was always gonna be, you know, grateful for that, yeah. and um, I didn't want any bad blood there. So, um whatever the best way possible that um, we could get that over the line was, um, um, yeah, and that was the way I think we, we did it. And yeah. I, I didn't, yeah, like you said, I didn't do much, so um, I left it all up to my agent. And, um, yeah, and I hope I, hope I haven't, um, I didn't fucking <laughs> leave on bad terms. But um, I'll just ring, I'll just ring NZ, are you now and let them know that? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, yeah, and um, 
yeah, like I said, always grateful for, you know, NZR and Crusaders and that. Um, for giving me my first shot. Yeah, man. Shout, shout out to New Zealand Rugby <laughs> men and Crusaders again for that. Um, so you come and you end up picking Brumbies. Uh, talk to us about um, the couple of, or your, basically your time there with the Brumbies. Uh, yeah, to this point. Um, yeah, so 20, 2019 was my first year um, at the Brums. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, oh, fuck. You know, I've won a couple of titles here. Uh, <laughs> give me the... <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I wasn't thinking like that. But nah, 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 you were, man. Nah. You were. <laughs> um, nah, so I'm, I'm coming into a team, you know, uh, an established team. Um, you got the likes of Al, um, Christian, Pocock. Nick White was still there before we went up, uh, or he was still away? Nah, he, I think he was away. Mog was there, I think. Nah. All no, of those 2019? 2019. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Yeah, Lonigan? Um, Lonigan. I can't remember who the other halfback was. Rodney Yonah? <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks like hey, a halfback, sh- mate. Shout out oh, Rodders, yeah. man. Shout out Rodders. Um, <laughs> You're in trouble, man. You're in trouble. Oh, Joe Powell. Joe Powell. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That was so before he came here. Yeah, yeah. Correct. This is yeah. 2019. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so they have, they've they've got a you know pretty established team, and I'm just coming in as you know like I'm starting from the bottom again. Um, uh, and 2019, I don't think we we lost in the we lost in the semi. I, I think, think it was semis. You lost to was it the Chiefs? No, nah, we went to we travelled to Aji and lost oh. to the Pumas over there. But I was. The week before I got injured, I did my hammy. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. And I um, you still went. You still went over, didn't you? Nah, you stayed, oh, you I didn't, stayed. Stayed. I didn't go over. Um, and that was a pretty that was a pretty exciting um, season. Like first season, um, and I'm I'm coming off the bench most games, I think, or start of the season. And then um, I think I play a few games at six or seven, and then. Yeah, pretty much started playing eight, like, regularly from there. Uh, maybe end of 2019. 2019. Was, it, was that after Lockie, eh? McCaffrey yeah, there for yeah, a Lockie McCaffrey. Will, oh, he was the eight. Um, yeah, might have been on off the bench a few, like, in and out. Yeah, the I think you guys were, like, taking turns, basically, yeah. through that year. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it was pretty exciting um, and pretty cool first year at the Brums, you know, we go make it all the way to the semi, um, but we lose against the Pumas. The Pumas go to <laughs> to Christchurch to and play Crusaders. Oh, that would have been some sort of yeah return, eh? Right, and yeah, well, Your first been, year. Oh, I probably would have missed it from a hammy, but... Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. But, like, they were trying to get me back, so I was rehabbing to play the final. Oh, wow. Well. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> so all my rehab was um, going well up until we lost. When we lost, I flew. I flew to Christchurch. Um, I can't remember what for, but I flew to Christchurch and I was there for the final. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't remember. What, I might have <laughs> just like randomly just went. Oh, yeah, we're well, no, gonna come. The boys hit you up man, for Mad Monday. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I'm just gonna come and then I uh, rock up and. I'm in the Mad Monday. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> so I'm, I'm like partying like um. You I, just I won, won another. I just won the title. <laughs> like, I'm still here, boys. I'm yeah. still here. And like, they the boys didn't care. Like yeah. I was in there. So all year you're wearing a Brumbies top by the Crusaders top underneath <laughs> the Brumbies top. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brumbies just. Nah, it was a good year, but yeah, it was, Brumbies. Yeah, yeah, it was a good year. We lost in the semi, and then. So from there, 2020 is COVID, eh? Yeah, yeah COVID. Did yeah, they so did they stop the season or was that the the half season? 
Might have been the half season. Yeah, I think it was the half season. True. But, yeah, it was a fucking shit time. But Bad time, yeah. Um, yeah, 2020, COVID year. Fuck. We're just training out of our bubbles. Fuck. Um, oh, you guys are training from home. Yeah, our teams, yeah. our team, like our team, got split into groups of like five or six or something. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> that's such like a waste of time. Yeah. But it was, it was actually fun, eh? Like, it would be yeah, fun for the players. Yeah, like there was five of us. It was me, Eri, Sol, um, Rajan, one of the young ones. I can't remember who else there was. But we would have been just like, fun for the players. We just oh, like yeah. go coffee. <laughs> Go to the field <laughs> and just sit there, play our music and just like chat. Just lounge around, have a yarn. And yarn. then like we'll put the boots on and then we're playing kick um <laughs> kick golf <laughs> around the field. <laughs> and that's our that was our training pretty much for the the whole fucking See, COVID period. Yeah. <laughs> well you couldn't do much anyways. Yeah, there was not much time, so you couldn't really Yeah, there was but no games we we weren't training for anything like Season was pretty much done. Yeah, yeah. So we'll so just like so this. So around that time, or just before, around the, I think around that time, eh, is when you uh, first get a look in with the Wallabies. Nah, so I was um before when you first come over. So I was twenty eighteen. My debut was twenty eighteen, mid year of the Crusader season. So then I, oh that's yeah, right, mid year in June. In June, oh, it was yeah. against Ireland. Ireland, yeah, yeah, yeah Ireland. Ireland series. I get um, up in Brizzy or Sydney. Yeah, Brizzy. Brizzy. I got called into the Wallaby squad from the Crusaders, and um, yeah, that I don't think you're allowed to to pick from, you know, if you're not playing from if Australia, you're not playing first, from yeah, uh, for any of the Aussie clubs. Aussie clubs, no. And they had to go through like you a, must have done some good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like Razor was like. Like he was for it. advocating for you. He was all for it, and he was happy for me to, you know, go and play, um, play for the Wallabies. What um, a man! So it was that was pretty good from them, and um, yeah, got to go. I debuted <coughs> in twenty eighteen against Ireland. Uh, played those tests, um, and then I think I went on the spring tour maybe that year, end of twenty eighteen. Man, how was that, man? <laughs> spring tour. Uh, yeah, it was good. I uh, went to Japan. Honestly, can't remember what. Oh, went to like Wales. Would have been uh, amazing. Maybe Scotland, I think. But yeah, yeah that's, that's those those tours are, are like yeah pretty Cause, good. Because eh? it doesn't come around every year, is it? Every four years, spring tours. Oh, spring tours always every year. I think it's just always. But that's every like year. Except that, for World that's Cup like year. a you know just the end of year do kind of thing, eh? Like those yeah, sort of tours, much, eh? Yeah, like, yeah. like for. Um, a lot of emerging players yeah, as well, they, like to, to look in with the young boys. And mate, so those those parties would have been crazy. Oh, no, nah, we weren't really there for parties. But um, <laughs> what are you talking about parties, bro? Nah, <laughs> it, nah but it was, hey, a, it was a good time. Like, you know, you're traveling yeah. you're on the other side of the world. You get to experience all that stuff. Um, so it was pretty cool yeah. in that sense. And you're playing good footy. So Even even like visiting like stadiums, like the Murray Stadium. Yeah. Scotland. Like, man, those are... Them. Oh, Those are stadiums that, been that crazy. we see in TV. Fucking dream of playing it and play on uh, rugby, rugby away. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, rugby. Uh. <laughs> and you're there um, in person now, like yeah. You and know? Then you're there, you get to experience like firsthand, like the atmosphere and what it's like. Uh, so there was like pretty big for me, eh? Being uh, on that side of the world mm. and yep. So well, yeah. While we're talking about the Wallabies, man, we'll wrap it up in a bit, bro. But um, while yep. we're talking about the Wallabies, man, um, obviously there's a uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk about um, surrounding yourself not getting picked in the uh, Rugby World Cup. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, have a gaze at all the rugby uh, um, socials at the moment, but um, there's a lot of um, fans there that are you know. I'm not happy with the selection that Eddie Jones have, has made uh, for the World Cup. Um, not just yourself, but there's a lot of other players there that um, everyone that follows the, the Wallabies and that feels that uh, should be in the Rugby World Cup squad, but they're not. Um, just wanted to, you know, because you're speaking from experience and that yourself, uh, being in, in your shoes, uh, what's how's that all 
feel at the moment for you? Um, I know obviously you want to be there with the boys in France at the moment preparing for the World Cup that starts uh, in the weekend, but you're not for whatever reason, Eddie Jones said. Um, can you just, uh, you know, have a little chat about that and how, yeah. how all that um, um, came about, if you want to yeah. get into it? Nah, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, it's all pretty... Um, pretty hard. Like, you know, I, I got picked in that first squad of the year um, to play South Africa and yeah. Aji. Um, so I was pretty, you know, pretty confident uh, given, like, the last season I had with the Wallabies um, that I was, you know, be there or thereabouts. Um, and then uh, play that one test in South Africa. We, we get and then that was that's my last test <laughs> in South Africa, yeah. For the for the for the year, really. Um, we come back to Oz, and I don't get picked in the twenty three. Um, and then I'm starting to like feel like a big. I get told that uh, there's just changing it up. You guys are cracking. I'm like, oh shit. Maybe I, maybe I'm sweet. Good to go, <laughs> mate. Um, yeah, then we, we lose that RG test. And so now the Bledisloe, the, so there's another squad that gets named for the Bledisloe. Series? The Bledisloe Series. Game G, yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um, yeah and um, I like, no, I didn't make that. Um, can't remember what was. Can't remember what was. Oh. Said he was giving one of the other guys a crack. That was the that was the comms um, I got. So I'm like, oh, it's sweet. Um, yeah, that that series plays out, and I don't see the guy that he said <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna give a crack. So now I'm like, fuck. The alarm alarm bells are ringing. Yeah, now. now I'm like, fuck. This could, could be, be me, you know. After after the 2019 not making that World Cup. Exactly. So yeah. I'm like, fuck. This was like, you know, my last, yeah. probably my sort last crack at it. Um, next World Cup, I'll be fucking 40. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, but yeah, I'm like, fuck, this could be me. And But I'm just um, going about my, you know, normal life. I'm, you know, happy and content with my, you know, my two kids, my, my wife. Blessings. And, yeah, we're just at, we're just at home as normal, you know, and my my wife's like keeps telling me, you know, like whatever happens, you know, um, you got us, and and like for that I'm grateful for. And I guess that just, helps, yeah. man. That's yeah, no, nah, uh, that's that helps, man, because especially something like that where, like you said, um, the heartbreak of the first World Cup mm. when you get told from a coach um, if you come over to Australia. You'll be in the rugby plans and you're getting told all this stuff to your face and over the phone and then when the rugby world cup comes you know you don't get picked yeah after that heartbreak and then to, to get it followed up with another heartbreak this one probably stings a bit more knowing that uh you've had you probably in my eyes and i think a lot of a lot of the boys that, that follow the rugby and the wallabies I, I still feel like you're probably top two uh you and marika are probably the best performing wallabies throughout the last season. Um, just, you know, with all the games that you guys all played and how you guys performed. Um, I feel like, yeah, yeah, you, you two were definitely the best Wallabies. So for that, just to happen just last season and then get a new yeah. coach, which obviously doesn't doesn't help as well. Because yeah. then with new coaches, uh, new favouritisms, or not just, not favouritisms, but new combinations and new outlooks on how yeah. they coach and that comes into play. And yeah. for some people um, like yourself and that probably miss out because of that. And yeah. that's unfortunate, but like you are saying, man, um, your wife and your two kids and that, when you do go home and you see them every day and that, yeah. uh, I think they keep you like grounded and give you a perspective of life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, it was like a win-win, you know? Yeah. 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 2019, I didn't have, you know, kids you know wife yeah um so that was all i had was my you know rugby 
to to get told no that at that point in my life, I was like, oh, the end of the yeah, world. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. there's nothing else. <clears throat> and then, yeah, fast forward to this this year, like you know, there's my goal World Cup. Um, to get told no, I took it like, okay, you know, I got my wife and kids. I'm pretty happy. Like, get to spend more time with them. Get to see, you know, my kids grow and hundred um, percent. Um, you know, I get to be here at home with my, you know, my boys and my family. Family, yeah, yeah. yeah. boys. Um, win win. So it was, yeah, so it was like it was bittersweet, really. Yeah. Um, as yeah, as much as I want to be there, I'm pretty happy being here at home with my family and ready to take on this next journey, mate. Oh, that's amazing, man. I think that's like probably the the most important part of of like the rugby side of things like you know when obviously obviously the push comes to shove where you know a coach has a certain opinion on on a certain player like yourself mm. um obviously we we back you 100 percent. a lot of your support system backs you 100 percent. but you know I, I think it's important for for the kids to know at home as well like you know y- you can't really base yourself off off one man's opinion you know, one coach's opinion is is one coach's opinion. Like mm. someone could come in tomorrow for Eddie Jones and say, "Hey, Pete, you're straight back in there." You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like, kudos to yourself, man, for you know just mm. just surrounding yourself with the right support system. Obviously, your wife Bex and your t- your two um, kids, you know, probably have kept kept you real grounded. Mm. And I think it's like you know important for for a lot of players that come through, you know, that they get that sort of opportunity. Um, always to know that you know it's not always the be end or you know like yeah. you know the the end sort of yeah. um result if you yeah. get a coach that says mate you you know sorry mate we're going yeah. a different direction you know but i think it's it's just kudos to you to you just being resilient and and just saying you know like i'm pretty content with 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 that decision and shows how mature you've probably come yeah. come a long way yeah. since you know <laughs> if say, if that was to say if this was eddie jones and telling you again like and you were, you know had no wife, no kids, no support system, yeah. mate. I reckon it would have been a different story. But you know, it's just you know, we we give you your flowers as well, man, just for being mature enough to to take that, um, you know, just into consideration, and obviously yeah. just be you know be grateful for for whatever's you know whatever's in front of you, which is your family, and obviously us here. And we hope that you know we can support you as much as we can to hopefully see you over in the World Cup. Hopefully, you know. I'm not hoping, but you know, someone gets injured or something <laughs> like that in the old squad. And never, never, that, you know, you never rule it out. You yeah. never rule it out, but you know, I'm not saying that we we want to see it. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, we know your, you know, your uh, achievements. You've 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 made a lot of them, and um, you know, we're just proud to be you know some of the boys that 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 witnessed it. So, you know, kudos to you, man. Give you flowers and man. skull. Excuse just the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, and just in saying that as well. Um, we do still follow the Wallabies, man. You know what I mean? Especially the boys there that are playing. Uh, we also know a few of the boys, and I know Pete. Pete's very close with a lot of those boys as well. Uh, there's some Melbourne boys there that's uh, in the squad as well. Um, we still we, we back the Wallabies always, man. That's that's always how we've always been, and uh, I think that's how it always will be. It's just, uh, yeah, just uh, sad seeing one of your close boys um, get done in like that. But you know that's life, and. I guess we just got to look at the positive side of things is when it, um, decisions like that get made, which is what Pete said about um, you spending more time with your family, mm-hmm. which is good. Yeah. Good to hear. So um, just on the World Cup, while we're talking about the World Cup and stuff, uh, probably wrap it up in a, in like five five minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's taking a bit long, We've Seb. Over hey, time, Seb. bro. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Seb, sorry, mate. Uh, but yeah, just on the... <laughs> Sam, I'm wrapping it up, brother. I'm wrapping it up. <laughs> nah, just on the World Cup, man. Um, who do you... F- uh, f- uh, what country do you reckon is going to make the finals and who do you um, uh, think is going to take it out? Besides Australia. You can't say Australia. Because we're back in Aussie. Uh, so. If there was another squad or another country. The two finalists and the obvious winner. Oh, the, the winner. Uh... I'll probably go. I don't know how the the pool's gonna work, but I'd probably say Africa's up there. 
one of the finals, and then because I want to, I want to say Ireland, but then AB's. Yeah, that's right. France, not Olympic. Oh, I think Ireland will pip him. True. I reckon AB's will do it, mate. First game. Um. Yeah. I'd probably say Africa and Ireland. Ireland. Oh. And the winner. Oh. South Africa. Oh. Box. Yeah. I'll, 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 for some reason, I feel like if the Wallabies don't win, we're back in the Wallabies, boys. But if they don't win, I'll, I'll, for some reason, I feel like the Box are going to win. Yeah. Something they, about they turn the, up for the Rugby World Cups, those boys, man. Something about the seven-one split in the on the bench. Oh, mate, that was that was, oh, that was a pretty good decision though. At the end of it, everyone's <laughs> chucking a uh, bit okay. of a. The the forwards were unstoppable. Yeah, right? hard out, man. But the ABs did have a man down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that. But like, the start of the game, they were <laughs> yeah crazy, just yeah. dominating it. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, brother. Um, uh, before we let you go, man, you've obviously signed a new contract to go to France, man. Congratulations. Mm. Congrats, Congrats Two years in France. Yeah. Um, I hope everything uh, goes well over there with you and uh, um, Bex and the kids, man. I know it's going to be a good uh, good new, chap- new chapter for you boys, uh, you, the little ones, and, and Bex. I know you're looking forward to it and that. But, uh, yeah, just wrap it up, man. Just appreciate you jumping on board. Uh, thank you for being um, Thank you for being our first episode, man. A big... Big dramas uh, potty. Pleasure, uh, mate. Pleasure, first, is this your first podcast as well? Like ever? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Nice. Oh, See, oh, had to be the oh, had to be the I big dramas idea, podcast, boys. mate. BDP. Nah. Thanks for having me, lads. It's been a pleasure. Nah, cheers for that, man. We'll wrap it up there, boys. Then, uh,